Hello, dear colleagues and friends. Uh, I am Marco Diuzani, I'm Chief of Cardiac Surgery Department at Lanchisi Cardiovascular Center, University of Marche Ancona. I'm very glad to open and contribute to this uh, digital symposium from Medtronic within uh, EACTS, which will uh, make a focus on uh, new evolving uh, indications and interventions for patients with aortic stenosis. So with, with indication to tower expanding to always lower risk patients, I think the role of the heart team gains importance to assess the weight of clinical and anatomical patients' characteristics and eventually define what is the most appropriate intervention in a single patient. So objective of this session will be uh, basically to uh, review new data available on TAVI for low risk and bicuspid patients, to discuss the implication of these new data, both for TAVI and SAVR, and explain the minimal invasive uh, uh, SAVR approaches and why and how they can advantage uh, surgical practice. So I'm very honored to contribute to this symposium together with two experts in the field, Professor Sabine Blazifer from Biden Ives in Germany and uh, Professor Thomas Modin from uh, uh, Bordeaux, uh, France. Uh, the agenda will contemplate uh, uh, three presentations, one from uh, uh, each of us, uh, I will have a presentation on uh, um, minimum invasive uh, AVR in 2020 and beyond. Professor Sabine Blazifer will talk about expanding options for bicuspid aortic stenosis patients, Tavir and Savar, while Thomas Modin will address the right choice for uh, low risk aortic stenosis uh, patients. We will have appropriate time for discussion between the presentation and at the end of the presentation just before. Uh, closing. So, uh, dear viewer, viewers, uh, I hope you will enjoy this uh, session, and I will start with my first presentation, which is about mini AVR in 2020 and uh, beyond. So, um, this is uh, my hospital uh, in uh, in Ancona, and uh, since I moved there about four years ago, um, we be working hard to achieve basically two goals. The first one is to make minimal invasive standard of care. And the second one is that uh, having surgeons should be able to cover all minimal invasive and catheter-based uh, approaches. So according to that, uh, uh, in a period that saw our volume patients, uh, patients volume increasing uh, up to 1,250 cases, you see also the effect of COVID, we will be losing about 250 cases by the end uh, of this year. We, uh, in 2019, we could perform about 90% of all aortic valve minimally invasive and about two thirds of the mitral valve with the minimally invasive approach. And also we started uh, a TAVI program in cardiac surgery. Uh, so as a surgeon, independent from the cardiologist, we are doing uh, TAVI in, uh, um, and, uh, and uh, we are able to offer all possible options to patients with aortic stenosis. But why am I talking about TAVR? Because the fact that surgeons are doing TAVR is extremely important for them and for their surgical, especially minimally invasive uh, program. In fact, uh, that allows, that, um, to perform TAVI for surgeons means to maintain patient's referral. I think this is very important. It, it helps us to remain balanced in SAVR versus TAVR decision making. And also we can acquire new skills and uh, likely develop a truly hybrid uh, intervention. This is uh, an example. This is a patient requiring a minimal invasive mitral and tricuspid valve repair. He had a severely calcified aorta. We would have turned him down from surgery, but we, you know, transferring percutaneous technologies into our surgical practice, and uh, in particular by using a neuroprotection uh, catheter-based systems, we could operate successfully in this patient. This is what we're doing uh, in this moment. So I think that uh, uh, to put together catheter-based and open surgical techniques allow us to improve our clinical results and expand our uh, indication. And this was the transaxillary miniature economy that we always use to repair mitral valve and tricuspid valve. And these are eight of the, the CT scan of eight out, out of the 10 patients we'll be treating with this uh, hybrid approach. But I think that as a surgeon, we learn a lot from, uh, from TAVR. Uh, TAVR, uh, this is one understanding. Uh, this is probably very easy, you know, it's under everyone's eyes. TAVR is, a tr is the least invasive aortic valve intervention. In fact, 
It does not require incision, no anesthesia, no pump, and it allows immediate recovery. We all know this, but what is the lesson for minimal invasive uh, AVR? We can reduce incision, of course, but we can also make minimal invasive anesthesia. We can make minimal invasive extracorporeal circulation and uh, put energies and efforts, uh, invest resources to in an early rehabilitation program to have immediate uh, recovery. The second understanding uh, to me was uh, uh, to understand why TAVR is a game changer. There are many reasons that make TAVR a game changer. Probably one of them is that TAVR is simple, it's easy, it's irreproducible, it's an operation that all operators, even cardiac surgeons, love doing and love learning. So I think if the concern here is to make, is to disseminate a minimal invasive uh, bulb surgery, I think we should put energies uh, to develop minimal invasive techniques that are easy, reproducible, simple, and to me, this means direct vision. The third understanding was uh, this one. Tavor has revolutionized the standard measures for the evaluation of an interventional procedure. Now that we have TAVR, patients are strongly requesting operation associated with less trauma, with immediate recovery, with an almost untouched quality of life. This is a very strong request we get from our patient. And the lesson here would be, of course, we should continue to generate excellent short and long-term outcomes, but at the same time, we should get concerned uh, on uh, patient satisfaction, on perioperative quality of life, and improve that substantially. After all, quality is as important as quantity of life to our patients. And we understand that when we look at increasing trends in the use of biological bulb in the young patients. They don't want uh, Coumadin because they want a good quality of life. We understand that when we see patients asking, uh, although they're very young, Tavr instead of Sabr, because the, the, the certainty of a fast recovery is apparently more important than the certainty of a durable valve implanted in their heart. And they learn this looking at other specialties, the orthopedics, thoracic surgeons, spine surgeons, they're all doing minimal invasive. So they, they, they want the same from us, from cardiac surgery. And you see that catheter-based intervention to treat heart operation are increasingly offered. So I think that as surgeons, we should go minimally invasive. And are we ready to, to target this quality of our outcomes, this quality of life outcomes? Absolutely. Uh, this is our experience. This is a three years experience on isolated surgical AVR, 624, all comers, um, low risk patients, 30 day mortality was 0.3%. 30 day stroke rate was 0.5%. So I think that when we approach 0% in terms of mortality and stroke at 30 days, we enter in that condition of excellence that um, secondary clinical endpoints like reducing incision, cosmesis, pain, fast recovery, atrial fibrillation, blood transfusion gain importance and become and should become, according to me, new measure clinical endpoints in cardiac surgery. When we have mortality of 0. Point something percent, these uh, measures of outcomes that are going under the umbrella of patients and family satisfaction, they really make the difference. So as surgeons, if we learn to improve our outcomes in terms of patient satisfaction, we will have done a very big step forward, I think. So I think we have, uh, our patients are strongly asking for minimal invasive procedure, we should better listen and respond to them if we want to remain key players in the management of these patients, if we want to remain their interlocutors, if we want to remain able of uh, engaging uh, uh, them. And full stenotomy is not a good response. Uh, continuing to offering full stenotomy when it's avoidable, when it's possible to avoid it, I think it's like being in the market trying to, you know, to promote uh, an item that nobody wants, nobody likes. It doesn't really matter how much we think it's nice, effective, safe, fast, whatever. They just don't want it. So I think it's useless to continue to offer this kind of uh, approach when it's possible to avoid it. And also we will make appear our administrators. I will not take uh, uh, the very last paper on uh, cost effectiveness of minimal invasive cardiac surgery. I will take one of the first one we know from 1997. The title here is very sharp and clear. 
minimal invasive cardiac valve surgery improve, improves patient satisfaction while reducing cost. So I think this is made quite uh, clear. And uh, how do we interpret uh, mini AVR at Lanchisi uh, Hospital? This is 2019. We've done about uh, 470 uh, aortic valves. And if we cut off the combined aortic valve replacement that we've done through a full stenotomy, we see that only 24 were done minimally uh, invasive. And these were the endocarditis and the hard uh, reduce. Or other were done minimally invasive or uh, transfemoral, TAVI. And why are we doing? Re recalling lesson number one from TAVI, we, as a surgeons, we are reducing incisions, of course, but we're trying to transform this minimal invasive technique in a minimal invasive therapy involving our perfusionist and using minimal invasive extracorporeal circulation as much as possible. Asking uh, our anesthesiologists to apply ultrafast track anesthetic protocols in order to uh, have immediate rehabilitation programs, in order to have immediate patient family contact and, re and decrease the burden of surgery. We call this a 360 degrees minimal invasive cardiac surgeon. Our incision, we have all of them. We're using anatomy, right anterior minister economy. We're doing the transaxillary as well, and type of incision will be selected based on patient clinical and anatomical uh, characteristics. This is mini AVR. Usually at the fourth, we do a very small skin incision. We call this two finger surgery, and uh, we, 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 we're doing also the David, the Bentel, the ascending aorta, the aneurysm surgery, I would say. Minister economy. This is our approach. And the lesson number two was to make it simple. So we're not working in a narrow um, intercostal space. We're not cutting, cutting the cartilage, but we're cutting the sternum like this. So we make a wedged uh, incision at the, uh, at the level of the rib that allow us to displace the same rib to caudal in order to have a larger uh, uh, operative field and have a perfect visualization of the aortic valve like this. And this is a very short clip, you know, the, the groin has been cannulated here. We're doing a four to six uh, centimeter skin incision. This is the trachotomy. Displacing the, cut, the, the rib to caudal. So surgery must remain simple. We sh uh, to, if you really want to disseminate these kind of approaches. It should not remain an operation that are done by few surgeons. These are uh, stay stitches uh, for, for the pericardium that allow us to have the bulb in appropriate position. We're clamping the aorta. We give cardioplegia. The aorta is open here. We're resecting the, 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 the aortic valve. And this is uh, an avalus that is implanted. You see how good is the visualization of the annulus. Surgery remains simple. I'm not sure that it's making any difference in, for, for the patient to have the, the, that minimal uh, rib uh, detachment. Surgery is natural, is easy, can be performed by the younger patient, by the younger surgeon, and this is the result. And, uh, and this is the transaxillary mini trachotomy that we've done in a few cases. We take this from our experience with mini mitral surgery. This is an approach that allows us to be very perpendicular to the valve and have a direct vision surgery, very intuitive. You know, we are get very perpendicular to the mitral valve so we can operate as every day through a sternotomy. We don't need any camera here. And we realize while doing this surgery that the aorta is very close. So we started doing mini AVR from this approach. And you see, this is a lady, this is a patient. And you see very well the aortic canals, direct vision. We get very perpendicular to the valve and uh, we use a running suture, six running suture to, 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 um, for the valve implantation. These allow us to implant larger valves, which I think is important for in case of valve valve procedure one day. And this is the non-coronary sinus annulus. And again, this is the left coronary sinus annulus. We're ready to sit down the valve. You know, we appreciate that, that this post 
of the avalus valve are a little bit flexible, so we can use very small incision. So I think this is a very important feature uh, for minimal invasive valve uh, surgery. This is uh, the view of the valve that was, uh, and this is, uh, and this is uh, the final result, cosmetically speaking. This is, I think, a, a very elegant approach. You don't see any incision. Uh, you have to ask the patient to lift up the right arm to see the incision. And uh, we are appreciating um, more and more the avalus um, features for the minimal invasive cardiac surgery. The order is streamlined. The, there is a very low valve profile that enables perfect visibility of the valve. The sewering is very general, so we can use, uh, if you want, uh, automatic stitch devices. And I mentioned earlier the flexible stent can be bended. So this is a very important when we use in very small incision. And this is a valve also that is conceived for, for valve in valve, uh, thanks to the uh, radio opacity of the frame, valve dimension and geometry, of course, the leaflet are mounted uh, interior and not exterior. And as I said before, we're not doing only minimum reduced incision, we use a minimal invasive extracorporeal circulation system to reduce blood loss, increase the biocompatibility of the extracorporeal circulation. This is our circuit uh, for MIRC uh, in cardiac surgery. And this is our experience. We just published on European Journey Cardiothoracic Surgery uh, propensity score match study MIEC uh, versus uh, uh, extracorporeal circulation in mini AVR patients. And we had less bleeding, less transfusion, uh, less atrial fibrillation. And again, when, we, when you have zero point something mortality rate, uh, transfusion, atrial fibrillation, bleeding becomes primary endpoints. And we're targeting these uh, measures of outcome to be, uh, to, to get uh, improved. Ultrafast track anesthesia. This is what happens. This was a miniature economy AVR, 81 years old lady, leaving uh, DOR, the operation is just finished. She's going to the ICU, extubated. Ultrafast track anesthesia provides many advantages and really allow us to be, uh, in general, less uh, invasive. This is the first one. After the operation, we go to the family and we can uh, give information in a different way. We're not saying anymore the operation is done. It was minimally invasive. Uh, but you have to wait because the patient is sleeping. We don't know about respiratory outcome. We don't know about neurological outcome. Please come tonight, this evening, or tomorrow uh, to, to know more about that. We can say the patient is, uh, the operation is finished. The patient is extubated, neurologically intact. Please go in half an hour downstairs to the ICU and be close to, your, uh, to, to, to the patient. So the burden of surgery is dramatically decreased. This means being minimally invasive as much as doing small uh, incision. You see the patient extubated in the middle, working with the physiotherapist and the daughter, which is just close to the, to the, to the patient. Uh, the, the perception of surgery is dramatically different, is dramatically reduced. And this is the lady, uh, you know, four hours after the end of surgery, which is sitting with legs out of the bed, uh, of, of course, extubated working with the physical therapy. So this is a 360 degree approach where surgeon, perfusionist, anesthesiologist, physical therapist, and even family members becomes, you know, all part of the heart team. They're all working together in one direction, and that is minimally invasive. And I can say that this kind of approach is also, you know, building our reputation. We not, we not just. A, this is not just a surgeon that is working minimally invasive. But this is a team that is uh, in all the components, the, the anesthesiologists, perfectionists, nurses, families, they are all concerned to decrease the trauma, the invasiveness of the uh, operation. And these are our numbers. You know, we've done, we, we're running at the speed of about 100 TAVR per year. Uh, we've done 166. This is cardiac surgery doing TAVR. And you see our results uh, are, you know, are showing that we can be safe and effective while doing TAVR even in our learning curve uh, period. And this is our minimal invasive AVR experience over the last three years. And you see that results are very uh, uh, encouraging. So I, I don't know what, uh, what our minimal invasive AVR is going to be in the next 10 years, but I think that mix should be standard of care. And to do that, it should be simple and easy to uh, reproduce. I strongly believe that, and I think that mix should go together with catheter-based intervention. I think that minimally, minimally invasive cardiac surgery should go beyond reduced incisions 
we can do more. We can use latest bulb and CPB technologies. Uh, we don't have to be lazy. I'm talking, I'm, I'm particularly thinking about uh, perfusion, minimal invasive uh, perfusion. If you get some advantages for that, I think we have to use that. Uh, and I think we should promote multidisciplinary teamwork, surgeon, anesthesiologists, perfusionists, nurses, physiotherapists, and families should all work to reduce uh, the invasiveness of our operations. So uh, while uh, we continue to generate, uh, so get concerned, uh, generate excellent short and long-term outcomes, I think we should also get concerned about improving patients and families' uh, comforts. Uh, quality of life and uh, satisfaction. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.